Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Rajesh Yadav and in today's session, I am covering most asked questions on data stack merge. So before start, I would request you to please watch the full video because I do not want you to miss practical questions that are mentioned from mid to end. Okay, so let's start. Here is the first question. What type of merging is used in below program? Data, combine, merge, data set A, data set B, run. So here we are not using a by statement to merge. So that's why it is a positional merge. So answer is one to one merge. It is also called as positional merge because in the above program, we are not using by variable for merging. So it will merge both the data sets based on the position of variables. Total number of observations in output data set would be equal to the largest data set that is used in merge. So guys, if you remember into the previous video, we use multiple set statement to combine the data and there the total number of observations were equal to the lowest observation into the data sets. But here the total number of observations would be equal to the largest number of observations in the data set. Okay, let's move on to the next question. How many observations would be in output data set match merge? So we have a data set A that has two variable and four observations and it has duplicate observation also for ID 2 and in data set B we have two variable ID and age and it has two observations but it does not have any duplicate observation. So here the merge is many to one merge because in first data set we have many observation that means duplicate observation but in data set B we do not have a duplicate observation that's why this merge is many to one merge. So the program is data match merge merge a b by id run so how many observations should be there in output data set okay let's see the answer so answer is five observations and this is the output data set how we reach to these five observations let's discuss this first because here by grouping is happening and based on this merging is happening okay so let's understand from the merge statement, first observation is read from the first data set and first observation is read from the data set B and ID is 2. But ID is not matching here. So that's why first observation is written to the output data set and the value for age variable is missing because age variable is coming from the second data set. Let's move on to the next observation. So the first data set observation 2 is read and first observation from the second data set is 2 is read. So both are matching. These are part of by grouping. So this observation is merged and written to the output data set. So 20,000 and age 60. Next observation is read from the first data set 2. But for the next observation into the data set B is we do not have a 2. In that case, what will happen into the by group in the case of duplicate, if one data set has duplicate values and another one does not have duplicate values. So that data set that does not have duplicate value for that ID, that observation from another data set is retained into the PDV. So in that case, this observation, this is read from the first data set to this is the new observation, but from the data set B, this observation would be retained into the PDB. That's why in the output data set, we see that ID is 2 value is changed from the first data set that is 40,000. However, for age value, because that observation was retained into the PDB, so this is merged with the, this observation and returned to here. So the interviewer here want to understand if you know this concept or not. Okay, for the rest observation 3 is into the first data set, 3 is not present into the second data set, so 3 is written and age is missing. For the second observation from the second data set, B, 4, that value is not present into the first data set, so 4 is written and the value for salary is missing because this variable is coming from the first data set and age, and age is written as 30. I hope you understand how we reach to these five observations. Okay, if we try to achieve this using proc SQL, then how many observations would be there? Let's see the answer. Okay, so I just kept the same data set here, A and B and match merge output also. But here I wrote the query for proc SQL and in proc SQL, if you know that when we combine data sets, it use Cartesian product. So how Cartesian product is created? Cartesian product is the combination of each observation from the first data set is combined with the each observation of the second data set. So in that case, if we see, we have four observation in data set A 
and two observation into the data set b so if we combine each observation with each observation of data set b there should be eight observation because one two two three these four would combine with first observation and then it will combine with four observation with four. So here I wrote this program create table match merge as select a dot id b dot id. I specifically mentioned b dot id because there is different ids here. We are not using any type of join, inner join, left join, right join. We are simply creating partition product here. So I had to specifically mention the id from a table b because there is automatic overlay is not happening in proxy equal. So a dot id b dot id as b id a dot salary b dot a. So I mentioned all the variables here from a and b quit. So now you can see these four observation from the first data set is merged with four observation of the second data set. Okay the value is 2 for client id b id 4 and then again these four observation from first data set is merged with the observation value 4 from the second. So that's why we have the 8 observation. So whenever anybody asks you about partition product you just simply multiply the number of observation from each data set. So 4 multiplied by 2 that means 8 observation and now you can understand that what is the uh, drawback of proxy equal using because it is creating Cartesian product. So it is just a matter of six observation, four in first and two in second. So we are creating Cartesian product of eight observation. Now you can imagine if we have 100 observation into the first and 100 into the another data set, then how many observation would be there into Cartesian product? So these would be equal to 10,000. So that is a big drawback of using proxy equal. So if anybody asks you the difference between or drawback of proxy equal joins, you can say it will create Cartesian product and that's why a lot of system resources are used and the processing is slow. So it's just a matter of 100 observation I mentioned. But what about if we have millions of observation, we have 10 lakhs observation in data set 1 and 10 lakh observation in data set 2 or maybe we are merging more data set. So the Cartesian product would become a huge and we need a huge number of uh, system resources, machines or servers to do the processing. So that's why this is the drawback of proxy equal join. However, later on we just use the inner join or outer join but the core concept is Cartesian product. First Cartesian product is created then filter is applied based on the various types of joins. Let's move on to the next question. I hope this is clear. What is the difference between proxy equal join and data step merge? The difference is the merge statement does not produce a Cartesian product and because of this data step merge is faster than proxy equal join. And the second is sorting is required for data step merge and for proxy equal join this is not required. Right and third is if we have many to many join like the duplicate observation into the first data set and we have duplicate observation into the second data set. So in data step merge we get undesired result because when we use data step merge one observation is processed once but in proc sequel we use Cartesian product. So when the requirement is to work on many to many merge then proc sequel is the ideal choice and more accurate. So proc sequel is always more accurate than merge. Let's move on to the next question. Write a program to achieve below scenario. Here two data sets are mentioned. So data set A that is highlighted into red and data set B. So what we want in that question all the observations from data set A should be written to the output data set. We need to create one data set M left that should have all the observations from data set A and all the matching observation or common observations from data set B. So what type of join this? This is left join. So in left join we extract all the observation from data set A and the matching observation from data set B. Common variable is ID. So how do we achieve this in data step merge? Here is the answer. We need to achieve left join using data step merge. For this we need to use in data set option. In data set option is used to assign boolean values. It assigns one to variable x or y if particular data set has an observation for that specific y group. So let's see the program first and then we will understand it how in operator works. Okay. So data step M left, we are using merge statement, then we are using data set A 
and then in bracket in equal x. So here we are creating variable x. So when an observation is present into the data set A and that participates into the merge, then the value of x would become 1, otherwise the value of x would be 0. The same is with b in equal y. So we are assigning value y equal 1 or 0 based on the participation of the observation from the data set B and then by id and if x equal 1. So what we are saying if an observation is coming from the data set A then the value of x would be 1. So only write the observation into the m left when value of x equal 1. So I hope this is clear. Let's move on to the next question. Write a program to achieve below scenario. So in that case, uh, in that image, uh, we have two data set A and B and the highlighted area is the common area. So what we want, all the observations, all the common observations from both the data set A and B. Common variable is ID and output data set name is M inner. So now you can understand that M inner means we are trying to achieve inner join here. So how we will achieve? using data step merge. For this we need to use in data set option. Here we are checking if a particular value or by group is present in both data sets. So the program is almost same in equal x in equal y by id. For the common variables for the common observation that observation is present into both the data set for id the common id should be present into the both data set. So that means that id is present into a data set the value of x equal 1 and that id is also present into the b data set that means the value of y equal 1. So we are saying only write observation into m inner output data set if x value is 1 and y value is 1. We are using and operator we are not using or operator. So and operator both the conditions are true then only it will write the observation to the output data set and this way we will achieve the inner join using data step merge. Let's move on to the next question. Write a program to achieve below scenario. Okay this one is little tricky. So here in the data set A the highlighted area what we want all the observation from data set A and we do not want any observation from data set B. Okay, so that means we do not need to include the common observation also. So all the unique observations from data set A. So left unique, it's similar to left join, but we do not want to consider the common observations from data set A or B. So here is the answer. I just mentioned the values also this time. So we need to pick all observations that are present in a left data set and those should not present in B data set. So we have a data set A that has four observation similar to we use that this data set into previous questions and in B data set we have two observations. So now what we want all the observation from A that are not common to B. So this observation these two one are common. So we do not want these but we want this. So one and three should be into the output data set how we will achieve. So here is the code. It's similar to previous one. Only what we are doing is we are using a different condition here. So this time what we are saying all the observation data set A means x equal 1 but y should equal to 0. For that observation that observation should not present into B data set. So and we are using. So if any common observation comes in then the value of x equal 1 but value of y equal also 1 but in condition we mentioned that the value of y equal 0. So that particular common observation would not return to the output data set. So this way we can achieve left unique. So if somebody asks you that you just achieve the right unique. So all you need to do is just reverse this condition. Okay let's move on to the next part. Okay guys, so these three programs I want you to create. So here uh, this one is first one is little tricky. So we'll discuss it uh, later. But this one is right unique. So we have just in previous question we achieve the left unique. So similar way you need to achieve the right unique. All you need to do is just reverse the condition. In that we use x equal 1 and y equal 0. All you need to do is you need to mention x equal to 0 and y equal to 1. So you will achieve the right unique and in that case I want you to create a program to do the right join. Okay, so we already achieved the left join in, in a previous example. So all you need to do is just 
reverse the condition there we use x equal 1 in that case what you need to do is just reverse this condition and mention y equal to 1 into if condition okay let's move on to the first one all unique so in that case what we want all the observations from data set a and b and we do not want any common observations just remove the common observation and all unique observation from a and b so we already achieved left or right so right we will achieve in this program but left we already achieved so all we need to play is with the if condition so for that what will we need to do for all unique use or operator in if condition instead of and operator okay so we will use or operator what we will do if x equal to 0 or y equal to 0 okay so if x equal to 0 means that particular observation is not present into the data set a that observation is present into data set b however if we use y equal to 0 then that observation is not present into b data set but it is present into a data set so we will use if x equal 0 or y equal to 0 so we will achieve this so let's move on to the next all right that's it guys topic is complete so if you have any doubt and questions please mention in comment section also let me know the feedback what i can improve about these videos if you like the video please hit like button also do subscribe the channel till then bye and take care